All right, so there's our first activity. Uh, take the cake. A large cake is in a room. The first person who comes in takes one-third of it. Then a second person takes one-third of what is left. Then a third person takes one-third of what is left, and so on and so on. Complete the table for C of N, the fraction of the original cake left after N people take some. Let's complete this table. If zero people take some of the cake, how much cake is there? One. One. The whole cake, right? The first person came in and took one third of the cake. So that's why there is two thirds of the cake left. The second person comes in takes one-third of what was left. So that's how much cake was left. The second person came in and took one-third of it. So how much cake is left? One-sixth? No, it's no, 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 no. So, what fraction? They took one third of two thirds, right? What is one third of two thirds? Two ninths. Because one third of in math means multiply. One third of two thirds is two ninths. So they took two ninths of the cake. Okay? That first person took a lot of cake, exactly. All right? So if they took two ninths, and there was two thirds left, so you're, there was two thirds. Somebody took two ninths, so two thirds minus two ninths. So multiply this by three, right? So that becomes six over nine minus two over nine. How much? cake is left? Four nights. That's a lot of fraction work there. I'd like to think we could be done with that because I think I see the pattern. What's the pattern? What's that? Never mind. I'm not talking about it. Anybody see a pattern? Just taking two thirds. Times two thirds times two thirds, aren't they? Yeah. One times two thirds is two thirds. Two thirds times two thirds is four ninths. What's four ninths times two thirds? Eight twenty sevenths. Right? Because 4 times 2 is 8. 9 times 3 is 27. 4 ninths times 2 thirds would be 8 27ths. Sixteen over 81. Right? The pattern is multiplied by 2 thirds. Because if if one third is being taken away each time, there is always going to be two thirds of the original amount that is left after that person takes their third. So if you want to know how much is left after each time, you just take what was there times two thirds, and that will tell you how much cake is left. Okay? Write two definitions for C, one recursive and one non-recursive. So there we go, let's practice that. Use C of N. So write a recursive rule and write an explicit rule for this pattern. Write a recursive rule, write an explicit rule.
All right, recursive. Rilo, what do you got for recursive? Uh, P of 1 equals 1. Careful. C of 1 is actually 2 thirds. So what's C of N equal to? So the first term, C of 1, the first term, this is the zeroth term, okay? This is the zeroth term, because when there were zero people that have taken any cake, the zeroth term is the number 1. The first term is 2 thirds, okay? So the first term is 2 thirds, but what's the pattern? I'm just multiplying by 2 thirds, so what's, how do I write my, the second part of my recursive rule here? Two thirds times c of whoops, c of n minus one for n greater than or equal to two, right? Two thirds times c of n minus one. So two thirds times the term that came before it for n greater than or equal to two. And how about the explicit rule, Lucas? One times two thirds to the n would work because one is the zeroth term, okay? Or c of n equals two thirds times two thirds to the n minus one, okay? So either this or this would work for the explicit rule. All right, something new here. What is a reasonable domain for this function? Does anybody remember what domain is? X values, yes, X values. Or in this case, the N values, okay? So it's basically asking, what are reasonable numbers we could plug in for N that actually makes some sense here? With the story, with the context. Can you plug in negative numbers? No. Why not? You can't have, a can't have a negative person. Can I can I plug in fractions or decimals for n? No. You can't have a part of a person. Because you can't have a part of a person. You can't have a fraction of a person. Either a person comes in and takes their third or they don't. So so we gotta we can't have negatives, we can't have fractions or decimals. So really right now we're thinking any integer, any non-negative integer. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, kind of forever, but actually at some point I think we'd probably say not really. Why? Because there's not too many Yeah, too, I mean, it's going to become so small, the amount of cake that's left is going to become so small it's not realistic anymore for them to take a third of what is remaining. Yeah, I mean, you'd be down to crumbs, basically. So what is a reasonable domain? I would probably say non-negative integers, non-negative integers until, I don't know, let's, I'm going to have you guys do some calculations for me. Non-negative integers, so 0 less than or equal to n, which is less than or equal to um, 1 times, What's two thirds to the tenth power? Somebody help me out. Two thirds to the tenth power. Oh. Um, two thirds to the tenth. People, I mean, a hundredth of the cake is that's we're going to be down to a bite. I, I mean, to me, I would, I really, I really would say once you get up to about ten people, it's probably not worth somebody coming in and taking their their third of what is left. All right. So, but do you guys understand the non-negative integers part? 
You know, can't be negative because you can't have negative people. Can't be fractions because you can't have fractional people. Okay? All right. Next one. I know we only got 10 minutes. Look at these patterns of population. Look at those patterns of population. Arithmetic, geometric, one of each. What do we got? Girls, arithmetic, geometric, one of each. Both. What do we got? Pay attention here. Maybe one of each. Yes, it was. Yeah. What's going on? Hang on. What do we got? Population A is arithmetic because we are doing what? Adding 6,000 each year. Okay? How about B? Is it arithmetic? Okay, how can you check to make sure it is geometric? Divide. Take this divided by this. 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 Let's go with calculators. Go. 1.2? Yep. Thanks, Jerry. Okay, thank you. So we're multiplying by 1.2. So actually that tells me that population B is growing by what percent? 20%. 20 percent. Very good. Population B is growing by 20 percent because if you multiply something by 1.20, that'd be increasing by 20 percent. Okay? So population A is just growing by 6,000 every year. Population B is growing by 20% each year. Okay? Um, we talked about whether they're arithmetic or geometric and how we know. Write an equation to define population A. Write an equation to define population B. And then last question, does population B ever overtake population A? So will... Will this population ever surpass this one? Yes. Okay? Let's see if we can't figure out when. Okay? Let's see if we can't figure out when. Maybe let's get some equations first. What's the equation for population A? Use the explicit, what does it Arithmetic, right? Yeah. yeah. So it won't be raised to a power, it's going to be a linear function. Oh, 6,000 in. 6, 000. 6, 000 in. Plus, 6, 000. plus 23,000. Yeah. Because 23,000 is the zeroth term. That's how much there was in 1990 at the beginning. Zeroth term. So 23,000. So a sub n equals 6,000 in plus 23,000. Population B. B of n equals what? Zero term? Times? 1.2 raised to the n. Right? Where n represents years since 1990. Okay? I want to know when this population overtakes this one. How do we do that? Plug in numbers, see when it finally does? Yep. How else can we do it? I don't disagree, that works. You graph it. Graph it, right? Graph this, graph this on the same axes. See when this one gets higher than this one. Okay? All right. Figure it out. Go. Guess and check or use a graph. Go. Okay. 
What are we getting? It's about 22nd year. So about 22nd year? Yeah. Okay. And do you do that by guessing and checking or? Yeah. Well, we tied the building for end until we got the numbers really close and then we just moved on. So yeah, you plug numbers in for end yeah. until yeah. these two amounts got really close. Yeah, perfect. That's perfectly fine. Or Desmos. I'm going to watch this, guys. I'm going to change my window here. The x-axis represents years since 1990, right? I really then only probably need to see the next 30 years, so from 0 to 30 would be fine. On the y-axis, the population A is already starting at 23,000, so I probably don't need to see below 23,000. But then who knows how far up I need to see. Let's go 250,000. So I kind of had an idea what the X values represent. They represented years. So I opened up the window from 0 to 30 years. Okay? The Y value represented the population. I didn't need to see a population of zero because the one population was already starting at 23,000. So I picked 23,000 as my minimum and then I picked a huge number as my maximum. Good thing I did go all the way up to 250,000, otherwise I wouldn't have seen where they intersect. So it looks like to me, a little more than 21 years after 1990, okay? A little more than 21 years after 1990, they both would have had a population of about 150,000. That's how I could use Desmos to help me answer that question, all right, versus just plugging in numbers. But they're not all plugging in numbers. By yourself, you guys have multiple calculators going, so that, by myself, though, I probably would have graphed it, it would, it would be a little quicker to have to check every number. Okay? You ready to do your portfolio problem tomorrow? I will bring in those pennies. <laughs>